CGI friends, so welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. Uh, in this video, I'll be covering the inner extrude tool, uh, which is right next to extrude. Uh, let me just switch to editing mode. So, in my last video, I covered the extrude tool. In this video, I'll be covering uh, the extrude inner. It's really, these tools are similar, and uh, there's not that many options as you can see. You have your subdivisions, you have your off offset, and that's about it. But it's really uh, handy to use it. Uh, together with the extrude tool. Uh, so in this video, I'll just create something out of this tube and uh, it will give you an idea how to how this tool is used. But sometimes it works in your favor, you know, it creates really nice uh, geometry and then you can extrude from there. But sometimes, especially if you're working in, uh, let's see, yeah, if you work in Connect, uh, sometimes an extrude uh, creates, you know, edges that you don't want. So I'll also cover that scenario as well. So when it comes to inner extruding, it's really easy. All you have to do, you know, it all by the way, it only works in face mode, uh, so it doesn't work in points or edges. Uh, this tool only works in uh, face mode. The shortcut, as you can see here, is M. Uh, so M is your extrude tool. I mean, inner extrude. Is it M? Oh, I. Okay. I guess it's I, and then uh, D is for extrude, and I is for inner extrude. So let's just highlight these top faces. And the uh, first thing you want to do is optimize your uh, whatever object you're starting with. Uh, so in this case, we have this uh, tube. So what you would do is highlight all the points and just hit optimize. And what it does is just welds all the points for you. That's a really good start, especially when you start modeling. Uh, make sure all your faces are um, welded. Anyway, let's highlight the top area here. Uh, you can use loop selection. You can just highlight it manually. And it's really easy, you just click uh, your inner extrude tool, or I, on your keyboard for the shortcut, and you just extrude inner just like this. And then from here, you can click command or hold command, and you can extrude up. So this is like the typical use of this tool, and uh, it just creates, um, you know, these uh, geometry inside your other geometry, and it lets you extrude and uh, add subdivisions to your mesh. So for example, if you drop it inside the subdivision surface, you get this kind of look and obviously if you want this edge to be sharp uh, this is not what you want and by the way to switch from uh, subdivision mode or flat mode you just Q and it switches in between and as you can see the check mark uh, you know goes off and on so Q is really useful uh, just to go in and out of the subdivision surface but anyway for example you want this edge to be crisp and you don't want this kind of uh, rounding and the inner extrude tool is really useful for that. So you can just inner extrude just once here. And then if you go back to uh, the subdivision mode, you can see we got a nice geometry going and it gave us that subdivision on top of our other extrude that we did before. And same thing on the sides. For example, you don't want to be uh, this round. Inner extrude is really useful for that. So if you do UL and select your uh, edge, all the faces, and click I for an extrude. You can do something like this. And now if you go back to subdivision mode, you have nice and crisp um, geometry. And also, you know, another thing an extrude is good for is um, extruding in area like this, and then using T, which is scale, and holding command and um, drag inside. So you get this kind of effect. That's why I said, you know, the extrude and inner extrude kind of work hand in hand. Uh, so you make sure you remember your shortcuts. So it's D for extrude, I for inner extrude, and then whenever you want to extrude uh, using scale, rotation, or uh, uh, the move tool, you just hold command and extrude from there. Uh, so let's see what else we can do. Uh, for example, let's do the top face as well. So let's just highlight all the faces, UL. And then click I and extrude, extrude inner, and then from here we can extrude up or down. So let's hold command and extrude down. And you get this kind of effect. And then let's turn on our subdivisions. So you can, as you can see, you can really create all kinds of good stuff uh, with inner extrude. And when it comes to uh, the options, all we have is the offset and uh, subdivisions. And subdivisions are good for if you really want to. Let me just deselect and do it again. Um, and extrude, which is I. And then you can just add 
as you can see subdivisions to get really nice and crisp results. In this case, we don't need that many, so maybe I'll switch it to two, and uh, we'll just press Q, and as you can see, we're, we're getting a really nice uh, result here. And now let me just show you the scenario when it comes to uh, using the connect, because sometimes the NRX strip breaks uh, when you're trying to uh, work in symmetry. Uh, so let me just undo Q, go on my tab mode, go on my vertice mode, and just delete half uh, the vertices. So we have this kind of thing going on. And now we just have to add this to the connect object so we get the other half back, uh, the symmetry mode. Uh, so you can just hold option and, oops, hold option and uh, add connect object. And right now I think it's uh, mirroring to the wrong side. Well, not connect, uh, I mean symmetry. Oops. So let's add symmetry. And as you can see, we got our, uh, our object back. And uh, the subdivision also works as well. So as you can see right now, everything's fine, you know. But when it comes to inner extruding in your, uh, in your connect object, uh, let me just highlight the top, uh, the bottom faces here. And then inner extrude. As you can see, it uh, breaks right away when we do inner extrude inside uh, the, the connect or the symmetry object. So to fix that, you probably have to go in and um, move the vertices manually. Uh, I know in like uh, programs like uh, Blender, uh, we have uh, the bound option. We click B, you can uh, specify like where the inner extrude is going to go. So instead of it being on this edge, it will only happen on the outside edges. And uh, in this program, in Cinema 4D, we don't really have that option. So we have to um, fix it manually. So when you inner extrude, uh, the quick way to fix that, because we're getting all kinds of breaks right now in our geometry, is to uh, zoom in, switch to your vertex mode, and just select your vertices and uh, use uh, weld tool or the uh, stitch and saw. So for the weld tool you can just weld all the points together like this or you can weld it to the middle. But it's usually a good idea to weld it like this and then do the same thing here. Now what you can do is uh, fix the edges manually. So you would dissolve these, and to dissolve is MN, uh, the shortcut is MN. So you just dissolve these edges, and then go back to your knife tool, and uh, add those cuts in manually, like this. And as you can see now, uh, when we go uh, and subdivide, it's still broken here because I didn't add the, the edges manually, uh, but here everything's fixed, as you can see. We're not getting any breaks when we go back to our subdivision mode. So let me just show you what you would do here as well, just to give you an idea. So you would dissolve these edges, MN is the shortcut, and then you would just add the cuts manually like this. That problem only comes up when you're using um, inner extrude inside the symmetry mode. I don't know why I keep saying connect it's symmetry mode, but sorry about that. So they just dissolve these, add the cuts in. And I think the shortcut for a knife tool is K, if I'm not mistaken. Just keep, you know, remember your shortcuts, it's a really fast way to work. Uh, so D is uh, extruding, and extrude is I, and then the knife tool I think is K. Yeah, it's K. So you can just keep switching between different modes, I mean, different tools using the shortcuts really fast. Sometimes I would click it, you know. Right now, I'm in the um, uh, modeling mode, so all the tools are here. You know, it's not that fast. I mean, it's not that slow by just clicking. But sometimes I would just use uh, uh, the, uh, the the keyboard shortcut. Anyway, so now if you switch to uh, our subdivision, uh, you can see we're not getting any any breaks in our geometry since I fixed it. Uh, so that's the only time. I mean, there's other times when uh, inner extrude breaks your geometry, but. This way I showed you how to fix it, so just keep that in mind. 
But yeah, this tool is really simple. It just pretty much takes the two uh, edges and brings them closer together, giving you a geometry, and then from there you can extrude and do other things. So let me just show you one more time. Uh, go in your face mode, highlight your object. We can turn off subdivision, click in Q, uh, click UL, highlight your edges, uh, click I for inner, inner extrude. You get something like this. And see, we're getting that kind of break again. Uh, but this time it doesn't matter because I'm going to be extruding out upwards. So now you can click T, click uh, Command, hold Command and uh, drag in or out. So you get this kind of effect. And then from here you can use E to move. And uh, you can use Scale. And you can, as you can see, you can uh, scale it and uh, rotate and move after you extrude it. But anyway guys, this is about it for the inner extrude tool. Hopefully this video helped you. Please subscribe, leave it a like, and uh, I will see you in my next video guys. Uh, have a good day.